Uh, what's up everybody? So, my name's Russ, rwgresearch.com is my website. So, today I'm messing with the filament extruder. The homebrewed filament extruder, which is uh, currently in a pile of craziness over here. Um, a lot of you were talking about water cooling. Um, that was an option, but I wanted to try the, the fan cooling jig that I created just to see if that was an option. Actually, I think it is an option if you pull it out fast enough. You don't have to mess with water. Um, the other option would be cooling with water and uh, I got online and looked around how they do it industrial wise and I designed my application around that so the water bath actually uses um, the water tension to actually create the water bath it flows through a small channel and it has to overflow through the channel so the water is actually sitting in the channel and the filament goes directly into it I'll show you what I mean here in just a little bit so uh, yeah <clears throat> Um, it's actually running right now. This is actually the end of the video. I already recorded the video. But I wanted to show you something as well. To cool the water, which I don't think I'll need to do, but um, if I would like to do that, I have a couple of these that I salvaged. And what are these, you might ask? This is a um, heat exchanger. And it's got the, um, I forgot the exact name of it, but it's basically you put electricity to it. One side gets cold, one side gets hot. Um, if you'd like to look this one up, there it is. And what I'm probably going to end up doing, I'll leave the fan on the hot side. And the cool side, I'll actually take this aluminum block off and surface it and machine a um, channel in a certain pathway so I can run my water through it and back into my water bath. So that's the plan on cooling the water. This is really efficient. Um, it only takes, uh, I don't know how many watts, but it's 3.75 amps at 24 volts DC. I could do the calculation real quick, but I'll let you do it. So this is a really easy way to cool my water without having a uh, compressor pump like those down there. I also have a couple other ways to cool it. I actually have an old water fountain and uh, that just uses a lot more space and a lot more electricity so I figured I'd try to use something like this to cool my water and I can actually set the temperature control on this and actually adjust what temperature that I want it to be at so that's a pretty sweet deal too um, so yeah this is uh, a messy garage I just got done running all this on the floor which you'll see in a minute but uh, here's a quick overview <coughs> of uh, kind of what I got going on here. Oh, I have to cough. <coughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I just got done running it. So let's get started on the footage I already took. So, yep. All right, those of you who saw this already saw this in the last video of me actually creating it. But just so you can see what it looks like in detail with no water. Um, I did put some tape up here to try to keep all the heat off of the plastic. This is really thick aluminum tape, so it's kind of what it looks like. And you can see the channel cut down through there, the little water bead in there. So that's the actual part um, that I printed. And then I made this little part right here with... Uh, I'm going to sit this back down. I didn't know I could get it out of there that easy. This is actually a piece of laminate that you would put laminate paper between. It's the only thing I could find laying around that I could use to make a uh, an external trap in case the water gets pouring out of this thing in a weird way. I made this little step right there you can see because uh, I engineered this thing kind of funny. I got the bolt right there and so I had to get above that bolt like that anyway um, the other thing is I kinda engineered this kinda stupid um, I did a fantastic job in my opinion but I put all the electronics below the heating element well that's all fine except I didn't know I'd be playing with water <laughs> so I kinda made this so it would fit in here and uh, like I had it and trap any excess overflow in case I had a pile up right here in front of my water bath it would it would uh, flow into here and then flow back into my bucket. So it's just a water trough. That's all it is. But I used a heat gun and actually heated this plastic up with a heat gun after I stuck it through the laminator. 
and uh, just kind of molded it. I bent it by hand and then I figured out I could use a heat gun to kind of shape it. So that's kind of what I did. Yep. All right, on to actually running this thing. Here we go. Okay, so as you can tell, the water is actually above, way above the slot I cut. That has to do with surface tension. So if we turn the pump off, you'll see the water going back through the pump. And what you'll find is right on the other side, the inlet of the plastic actually goes right into the water bath, directly into the actual lip. I'm going to turn the water back on and fill it back up and you'll see it it actually comes up and over the top by quite a bit almost all the way to the top side of the nozzle and surface tension is actually what makes this work <clears throat> and then it overflows into the bottom Same thing on the front, it actually is overflowing through there back down to the bottom. Now what I did is I actually threaded these. Um, originally <clears throat> I was trying to going to try to thread them and I put two holes here because I'm pushing a lot more water in than the gravity can be um, that's pulling it back out. I was afraid it was going to overflow. So. I actually capped one of those because I'm running the water pump a lot slower than the pump can actually pump. It's actually pretty, um, this is my flow control valve, it's just a normally, um, it's just a normally open closed um, ball valve, but uh, if you set it just right, it'll hold that, uh, that flow back so it's not so intense. Because if I turn this all the way up, everything overflows, it's way too much water. So I just put fittings on there, I threaded them, and that actually worked really well. So this is a uh, water cooler, uh, magnets is the only thing holding it in place, but yeah, basically, um, can't hardly even see the water in there, it's so clear, you can see it flowing over there. I got two little channels there you can see to try to keep the water in the middle, in case it started running over the edges on at a weird angle. I got a bunch of heat tape or actually it's just aluminum foil tape but it's real thick and that's to try to dissipate the heat if any of the heat that's supposed to be on this plastic or going to be near this plastic because that tip is hot then I got me an overflow trough because after I got to looking at it if this thing would get in a bind and bunch up right here it would all just bunch up and everything would just fall everywhere it would just be a really bad deal so I'm gonna have to make some safeties in case that happens to shut everything down if I leave it sit by itself but basically I'm gonna put a set of rollers over here and pull it out and pull it through the bath just like you saw me pulling it through there by hand then we can really crank up the speed because I'll actually be pulling it to the right size um, a lot of you guys have been commenting on my videos I appreciate that I haven't been able to respond because of the change on Google eh, so I just uh, have to sacrifice the responses so I do apologize and I don't respond but it's not because I don't want to it's just because I have a hard enough time already trying to use my phone to reply to comments. I don't get much internet time on YouTube. So, there you go. That's uh, right there. Russ's extruder cooler. Just a test. Let's try it again. I'm going to crank it up to full speed this time and see... Uh, See if we can do any better with it and interestingly <clears throat> there's not really much water on the stuff after it comes out because of the surface tension so rather interesting let's try this again <clears throat>
running at full speed right there. Now I plan on putting some wheels in here to keep it in the water. That's what my holes are there for on top. Ooh, see, so you got snagged. Man, I'm really pumping stuff out of there now. I would love to see the weight of this pull it down, but it's not going to. <laughs> it's actually got a... like a knot in it. <laughs> it's going by itself. I just wanted to see if it would last. Until it gets in a snag, I guess. Like that. That was what I was afraid of. I'd say if I pulled it at the right speed. They work pretty well. I'd like to get a close up on that water overflow. I'll turn it off. Whoops. I'm gonna get you a better close up of the overflow and show you how there's no water flowing off of it here. So this entire water bath actually runs um, or functions because of the tension of the water. So the water is actually above the channels uh, until the point where it breaks over. You can see by this clip that whenever the uh, plastic sits on top of the water, um, it's kind of almost floating, but it's just the surface tension holding it up. But as soon as it breaks the water tension, it just falls right down. Hopefully by uh, allowing the um, plastic to feed directly into the water, uh, instead of drooping down, we can keep our tolerances more tight. Again, there will be a set of pulling wheels that will actually be pulling the plastic out. That will determine the actual diameter and it will be able to pull it straight through the water bath so it, it should keep it nice and tight and uh, hold its tolerances. Alright, I'm going to see if I can get this to work. I still might have to put my air cooler on there just to blow off any excess water. Yeah, there's no water on there. There's a little on that lip. <clears throat> I think I splashed it on there. But because of the surface tension, if I can pull it steady, it just goes right in and right out. I keep getting these kinks. <laughs> thing on uh, on going in when I don't do that it's actually going straight into the bath I could probably get it even closer see if it'll push it through there without hitting oh, I'm hitting the that's about as close as I can go right there. Just curiosity purposes here, let's see if it'll push it through there now. It's 
Gotta break the surface tension. There it goes. Um, yeah, it still won't really push it through there, will it? Pretty, uh, pretty sweet deal how it actually, how it actually works. Golly, it's coming out so fast I can't keep up. There we go. Ready? See, if I raise it out, you can see it breaking the surface of the tension of the water. As soon as it's in there, it's in there. I let it not like that you can see how fast I'm pulling it that's moving still don't know if I can get the correct diameter but we're just gonna have to play with it I don't know if this, some of this is the right diameter look how fast I'm pulling it out of here I think if I put that there, then maybe, maybe if I put my, uh, put my fan right here, and, uh, blow the air off of it, <clears throat> blow any moisture off of it. I'd say that might work pretty well. It's moving, man. Watch, I'll let it kick up. You can see how fast it's moving through there. Pick it up again. And again. All right. That's all I got time for. Time to cool this thing down. Look at this. A big long string. All right, well that's Russ's uh, <clears throat> cooler extruder, cooler ruler. Um, just to test, I just wanted to see if I could even make it work. In the short amount of time I've been out here, I pulled this much through it. It's quite a lot. That's almost more than the scrap I got on the table from all the other testing I've been doing. So anyway, um, <clears throat> this is the idea. Again, I do have my overflow, and uh, it's covered in aluminum tape thick aluminum tape that's a plastic um, um, sheet that you run through a, a laminating jig <clears throat> got a, uh, a water a little bitty water pump pumping through a uh, valve which I'm using as a flow control into a bucket um, so yeah it's really all I got for you but I wanted to show you what I've been doing what I did and what I'm planning on so the next step is to make a <clears throat> a polling system and a cooling system. Maybe I don't even really need the cooling system, but if I had if I had the fan blowing on there that I made, something like this. I actually made this one first, and it turned out way better. This one I had to drill the holes out because I made it too thin. 
this one's more thick you can see how thick the top is and uh, this one you can see how thin it is but it's the same design same thing just one worked a lot better so if I can blow air through there and cool that uh, blow any water off of it that'll be a good start at keeping it dry could also run it through something else but uh, um, yeah <clears throat> that's it let me know what you think and I'll keep working on this machine when I get time I haven't had much time peace and love to you guys have a good day see you